Are you wrestling with how to make your graphic design work more experimental? Are you having a problem understanding why all your efforts to make cutting edge contemporary design fall flat? I promise that if you stick with this video to the end, you'll have a clear plan to help push your experimental work out of the just plain bad and into a more aggressively contemporary space. I should point out that this is part, that this video is part of a larger conversation, a larger and deeper conversation that we have in the Cranbrook 2D Graduate Studio. Why your avant-garde typography, um, why your avant-garde typography doesn't look and isn't avant-garde and how to begin to fix it. So what I see over and over is I see a justifiable an understandable and a justifiable attempt uh, by the designer to push the work into a kind of aggressive and experimental space. And I see a, I see a number of um, f faulty decisions, as I understand them, that really are hindering, that are, that are a great hindrance um, and are actually destroying uh, the work. And so um, we're going to take a look at what those are. Uh, so this is basically, this video is on the perils of trying too hard. And I think that the fundamental issue, really the fundamental issue is that, uh, that, that people don't know where to begin and that they're trying too hard. And, and, and the core, the, 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 the most effective way to solve the problem is, uh, is research and self-education, right? So if we look at, um, if we look at a, a very simple question, I want to ask you this question. <clears throat> and uh, I see that we have nine or we have 10 participants today. I, I want you to think about this very simple question. Does this make sense to you? If you know next to nothing about typography, can you select beautiful type? Or if you know next to nothing about typography, could you create experimental type? And so th this, this, this question really lies at the core of, of what I'm going to suggest today. And the answer is, is clearly no. If you know next to nothing about the thing that you're working with, uh, your capacity to make compelling uh, design um, is really going to be hamstrung. So there was a book that was, I believe, uh, uh, originally written in 1989 by Eric Speakerman, and it's, it's called Stop Stealing Sheep and Find Out How Type Works. Um, this book is, uh, is pretty straightforward, and for almost any designer, regardless of, of, your, of your aptitude, I would suggest reading it. When I worked for Rudy DeHerrick in, uh, in New York when I was 23 years old, coming out of undergraduate school, I think this, this book, Eric published this book. And even though I was working really, I mean, at that time at the highest level of the field, um, the commercial design field, this book really reinforced, it's very simple, and it reinforced a lot of the principles of the work. So I have a PDF for you that I'm going to post to Slack. And... I can't stress this more fully. You should read this book. You should read this book. It's a very simple book. It's like a hundred pages, really conversationally written. You should read this book. So, So much of education, I think, really, really boils down to this idea of, of, of intellectual, of a kind of curiosity and a kind of, and a kind of intellectual aggressiveness. And that boils down to don't be fucking lazy about your education. Don't be lazy. The things that you, the things that you are passionate about you 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 have you have to um, you have to be ceaseless and relentless 
in your pursuit of greater knowledge of those of those issues. So it doesn't really just have to do with it doesn't just have to do with typography. But don't you, don't be fucking lazy. Do become passionate about the things that you're interested in and pursue them. Pursue the beast back to its lair. There's another book that uh, that I'm going to suggest and it's called The Anatomy of Type by Stephen Coles. This is also a really great a really great book and again here are you interested in more videos like this? There's one simple way that you can help, and it's really, it's, it's really just sound off in the comments below and share this video forward by Eric Speakerman. I would highly recommend that you purchase The Anatomy of Type and stop stealing sheep and find out how type works. So again, the fundamental premise that, that, that we're working under here is that, that, that I believe that people are trying too hard, and there's a paradox in this. I, I, I think I, I really think that in um, that the paradox is that in any discipline that that we involve ourselves in, whether it's the pursuit of of uh, mastery of a musical instrument, or whether it's the pursuit of mastery of typography or or design, that that, that simultaneously there is no such thing as trying too hard. As a matter of fact, I think laziness, intellectual uh, laziness, is really the primary stumbling block. But but there is, paradoxically, there is a type of trying that I would, I would classify as trying too hard that I'm going to try to explain. And it, it, is, it is a kind of paradox. So here we see an example of, of my work, which I would classify loosely as 1990s uh, formalist avant-garde work. And what I mean by that is I mean that the work might have a political or social program behind it, but that's not, that, that isn't, that isn't really this, the, 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 what we're looking at here at, at this point. What we're looking at is we're, we're looking at the, we're looking at the typography and the kind of, the, the kind of shape, form, and line components of the work and how those, those, those components, um, are, for lack of a better word, experimental. And what is the definition of experimental? Well, they, it, it, they play with, they, they, they tinker with the, the fundamental, the, the fundamental canon, the precepts of typography and layout. And so, um, I do see an interest in this type of work across culture within within design. Not that people want to go back to the 1990s, but what they want to do is, you know, they're interested. I heard I heard a student just recently talking about, as an example, that they they came to Cranbrook to uh, to challenge uh, the existing canon. That's completely legitimate. I totally understand that. That's what, to a degree, in a, in a slightly different way, that's what this work was about. So this is again, this is the the Temptation of Saint Wolfgang by me. And one of the major issues that I see happening in um, one of the major issues that I see happening is that when people think that they're making experimental work, what they're in fact doing is that they're similar to what we were doing in the 1990s. They're playing with issues of legibility, and therein and therein lies the problem. Okay, so the problem is in contending with with legibility. So th as I see it, there are two varieties of legibility. All right. There's degraded. So the first one is is uh, is degraded legibility, and and basically, if we if oops if sorry if we look at if we look at if we look at this piece, and I think if we look at this piece of mine from the from the 1990s, I think you're going to see something. If I point it out, that is quite a bit different than than what we find in in what we find in the work that, that I'm seeing today. And I'm not suggesting that people's work should look like mine. I specifically don't want that to happen. I want to be an individual with an individual voice. I would imagine you do too. But so basically, what we see here is we see typography as a sculptural object. We see typography being the the, the, the letter forms being being manipulated in a way that become a kind of sculptural object. And and the, but but the most important component that I really want to point out is when we look on the screen, and the thing that I think that that is key to this to this equ this equation is that each letter is visually comprehensible. And I think that this is one of the main areas where both my work and good work in this, 
in this kind of experimental genre that's dealing with typography distinguishes itself from the bad work. And that that is that, that the eye, like the, the, the silhouette of each of these individual letters, if you look at the mouse as an example, the silhouette of each of these individual letters is comprehensible. It is comprehensible. The typographic forms, while sculptural and not necessarily conforming to what we understand as traditional type, is still completely apprehendable and comprehensible by the individual. So this is a T, as an example. This is an A, right? T, E, so we see the E, M, P, T, A, T, I, O, N. Each one of these letters is completely comprehensible. This, this, this work, these, this type functions as a sculptural object, but Blah 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 blah. The most important component is that the eye, the eye, and, and simultaneously the mind can understand each of these forms. So how is this different, right? So you know, if we look at, and I can't believe I'm mentioning his name. You know, so here we have the here we have the the victory flag, and here we have the stop. You know, we have illegibility. We have this this layout illegibility or compositional illegibility. And this is the thing that I see over and over in contemporary graphic design that is attempting to be formalist avant-garde, for, uh, for, uh, 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 for lack of a better expression. If we look at this massive typography here, the type itself is incomprehensible. The letter forms become incomprehensible. This is one, I, I believe this is one of the major problems with the work. I think David Carson was very, very famous for a, num for a number of different reasons, but this is not one of them. And I actually think that this, you know, he does a lot of, th he did a lot of things very, very well. I think this is something that I think he did, that, that, that I think is, is, is bad, and I think has populated itself across our culture. So this is the kind of thing that I see happening over and over again. And I would counsel you, and I'm going to try to convince you that this is not the way to go, particularly when it's coupled with, with something that I'm going to get at in a second, okay? So we've got structural illegibility, and then we've got compositional Ill illegibility. All right, now concerning trying too hard. Basically, as I see it, if you're not going to design your own typefaces, um, which as an aside, I see as a critical critical component of formalist avant-garde work. But if you are not going to design your own typefaces, and if you're going to work as a traditional designer, if you're going to work as a designer, in most instances, typographic selection is arguably the most important component of being a graphic designer. What font, what type, what what typeface and what set of typefaces you're going to select. So if you select the right typefaces, what you're doing is you're effectively standing on the shoulders of giants. And again, I see over and over, incredibly bad, incredibly bad in our culture in general, I see incredibly bad typefaces being, being uh, serving as the foundation for work. So how do we solve this problem? We solve it very, very simply actually. So, in our discourse, as an example, one of the reasons, and you know, I, do, I don't see people doing this, but one of the reasons why there is a colophon, why there is this information in our written reviews, is because if you begin to if you begin to see sophisticated typography, you can reference that typography. Now, the point, to my mind, in all of education, is never to copy unless you're doing a actual master copy. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to post that or link to that as well, which I, I've already talked about. But if you're, it's never to copy. So I'm not suggesting that you look at the col colophon and just bite the typefaces. So what do you do? Again, what you're, what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to be you're supposed to be curious, and you're supposed it's you're supposed to follow a trail of breadcrumbs. You're supposed to research. So here we see Aperku by I'm not pronouncing it right, but anyway by Colophon, by the Colophon Type Foundry and Anthony Charette and um, routed by Darren Embry. So if if we follow this if we follow this um, if we follow these breadcrumbs. 
we end up developing a deeper understanding and finding examples of typography that, that are sophisticated. So the first thing that we do is we identify examples. We, find, we identify examples that we think are, are, are working and then we research them. And this, this I think, this, this whole thing, this whole thing, you know, in your studio practice in general, I believe that, that um, this sentence, this statement, if you can lead a horse to water but you can't make him drink, is so key to your personal development that it's frightening. Which is... You, you, one has to be absolutely relentless, as I said before, in their pursuit in their research and their pursuit of the fundamentals of the thing that they are interested in. Again, it's, it's, it's as if there's a trail that you're following. You're chasing a beast back to its lair. And as an example, someone who I, I think know, is maybe older can, can, can make suggestions. And I think that it will be very few people, very few people who, act, who will actually take the suggestions. And I'm not, I'm not, saying, I'm not saying that I'm inherently correct. What I'm, what I'm trying to get at is that, is that, you, that in, order, in order to make sound fundamental typographic choices, you have to initiate on your own, one has to initiate on their own a solid, rigorous, and active, and curious, above all else, curious uh, research practice. You know, I hear in the mornings, I hear, I hear bass playing, and, and I've talked about this, which is, I mean, it's annoying to people for me to talk about this so much, but that is the result, that's the result, the, playing the bass, playing a musical instrument is the result of, of grokking, of coming to grips with fundamentals. There's no way to hide. There's no way to hide in musical performance, athletic mu uh, musical performance, if you haven't done the fundament fundamentals. The same thing is at play in design. So you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make them drink. So how do we do this? How does one do this? You start looking at letter forms. So this book, The Anatomy of Type by Stephen Coles, as an example, this book is an excellent book. And we can see here, we can see here that the individual, you, should should become familiar should become interested and familiar with the principles the, the ideas that are that are involved in this book the closer you look at something the more your attention um, is pointed at or directed to something the more that the more that will expand in your life so so in a way one of the reasons why so many typographic choices are so bad is because a complete lack of awareness of the fundamental structures of typography and the, 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 the most important component of that is to just simply have your attention and your research begin to grok, begin to come to a deeper understanding of the thing that you're working with. So here are some more examples. So again, and I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to kind of drive home this point. Does this question make sense to you? <clears throat> if you know next to nothing about typography, or if I know next to nothing about typography, is it possible to select beautiful type? Further, is it possible to design beautiful type? And the answer is clearly no. So in an effort, I, I believe that in an effort to make cutting edge work, you and, and our culture in general try too hard. And I'm not referring to anyone in particular. I'm talking about the universal you. So the selection of letter forms with pure fundamentals, and, and here, here is how I think things go. This is the typical scenario that I think happens in our culture. 
This is from the T26 Type Foundry, and and uh, th there is I, I looked again. There is there is some fine typography on T26, but during the 1990s, the T26 Type Foundry, you know what what was happening in the 1990s was that. Um, in graduate schools and in colleges and design schools all over, basically all over the world, students were making making type. And T26 became a kind of, almost like a catalog of a lot of this work, right? And, you know, I'm going to respectfully submit, as is evidenced in front of us, that I'm not quite sure that, that, uh, that like Adobe or like Emigre, that there was, in fact, that the concern for, for what was being cataloged and sold was, um, frankly, good. You know, so as an example, when, and this is the point, when a designer is trying to make something that they see as aggressively experimental, their typographic selection, if it's not informed by research, what ends up happening is something like this. They look across the internet and they look at types samples, right? And you can see here, you can see that these, these, type, these, these typefaces that we're looking at, they are similar, they are similar to, to the stuff that I showed in one way. These letter forms don't conform to traditional notions of, of type design. I, I mean, of, of, of the armature of, of letter forms. Uh, but quite frankly, they're fucking awful. So what's happening is when a designer thinks that they want to make aggressive experimental work and they they don't they don't they have not sensitized themselves to typographic forms the first thing that they look for is they look for letter forms that that don't necessarily conform to the way that we draw that the way that the armature, you know, the, the basic structure of the letter form has been has been has been drawn over time. This is a mistake. This is this is the mistake, right? So my suggestion would be very clear. It is, in fact, if we look here at these two different options. What, we're, what, what you should do instead is you should opt for letter forms drawn with strong fundamentals. And so, <clears throat> as an example, and I use this typeface all the time, and, but uh, uh, IBM Plex as an example, or, or, or Kaluna, these, these typefaces, if, 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 you're, if you're going to get involved in, if you're going to get involved in, um, in in work like this there's there are two ways there are two ways to 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 um to approach the 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 uh the program fundamental to it is is designing designing typography but the composition itself can be interesting if you're selecting, if you're selecting fundamentally sound typography, fundamentally sound typography, the way not to do this, the way not to do this is to select, to select, to select these, these types of letter forms. This, this is, this is the problem. So um, now, if people have questions or comments, maybe we could have a kind of discussion, just a, a brief discussion about about uh, about the issues. Any any questions or comments, concerns, any anything at all? If you go to the description below, you'll find both a link to the live stream, uh, which should come up automatically anyway, as well as a Zoom link. If you hit that Zoom link, you'll appear on the screen. Uh, we'll t I'll take questions, comments, or just have a discussion. Immediately after that live stream, 
we did have a discussion in the uh, in the in the 2D studio with some graduate students about this material. So that will come up immediately after that. And the reason why I'm doing it this way is I have no idea whether anyone's going to be interested in this material and, and show up in the Zoom stream. If they don't, we'll bounce immediately to, uh, to the graduate students.